hello children your exams are over now and today we will discuss the term to examination question paper section 1 question number 1a state the necessary conditions for a body to stay in equilibrium so it is a two marks question therefore both the points for staying a body in equilibrium was to be written for translational equilibrium of a rigid body the net force acting on the object must be zero the key words are net force must be zero and second point for rotational equilibrium of a rigid body the net torque or moment acting on the object must be zero so these are the keywords that were required in the answer if you miss keyword net force and zero here in question in, in point number 1 you will miss one mark and likewise in point number 2 then comes question number 1b two bodies of equal masses are dropped from a cliff at any instant which physical quantity momentum kinetic energy potential energy and acceleration will be same now when you drop any body from a certain height if suppose the body is here and it is being dropped from a certain height definitely the kinetic energy of the body will increase as it comes down because its velocity will increase kinetic will energy will increase at the cost of potential energy that means potential energy will decrease as per the law of conservation of momentum and the amount of potential energy decrease is converted into kinetic energy and why potential energy will decrease because height is decreasing so that means kinetic energy and potential energy both will change now comes momentum now momentum is equal to mass into velocity since velocity of the body will change at every instant of time therefore momentum will also change now you are left with acceleration definitely here we are talking about acceleration due to gravity which will remain constant when a body is falling from a certain height now comes part 2 of this question can the moment of force be zero even if the force is not zero and the answer is yes moment of force can be zero even if the forces acting on the body are not zero because it means that in that particular situation the body is not rotating maybe the body is undergoing translational motion because of the forces that are present and therefore this is very much possible so part b of the question consisted of two parts so the marks are 1 plus 1 and you are supposed to write only the answer there was no need to write explanation next comes a numerical so the question was two forces each of 5 newton act vertically upwards and downwards respectively on the two ends of these uh, of a uniform meter scale freely pivoted at the center determine the magnitude of the resultant moment of these forces about the midpoint of the scale so if uh, according to the question if i draw a diagram the diagram would be like this it is a uniform meter scale of the length 100 cm since it is freely pivoted at the center so that means the fulcrum is at the center 
and two forces are acting in opposite direction but they have same magnitude which is 5 newton so these two forces form couple and that is what you were supposed to find so the resultant moment will be force either force how do we find this we find it by multiplying the force any one of the forces either force into perpendicular distance between both the forces so the value of force is 5 and the perpendicular distance between them is 1 meter because they are acting at the ends so this means the resultant moment is 5 newton meter this question was of 2 marks definite it was not required that you draw a diagram it was not required at all but marks distribution are like this that how do you put the values and then answer with correct unit if your unit is wrong then you will not get one mark for the second step that was question 1 c now comes the next question 1 d the question is a light body and a heavy body have the same kinetic energy which one will have greater momentum and why so a light body will have less mass and a heavy body will have more mass but both the bodies have same kinetic energy but have different momentum so the relationship between momentum and kinetic energy is given by this and from here we can conclude that momentum is directly proportional to root m this step this reasoning step carries one mark since potential since momentum and the mass are proportional to each other square root of mass are proportional to each other which means that the heavier the body the more will be the momentum and hence the answer would be heavier body will have greater momentum and this statement carries one mark so reason with the answer it is 1 plus 1 that is what the mark distribution is for this question and now comes the last part of question number 1 the question is a body of mass 200 grams is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 20 meter per second Calculate maximum potential energy gained by the body as it goes up and the value of G is also given. So here, first of all, we will calculate the velocity of the body. Velocity of the body can be calculated by using equation of motion by applying third equation of motion. So as per the question, the initial velocity is given and since you have to find the maximum potential energy, that means the body is at maximum height. The potential energy will be maximum only at maximum height and at maximum height, final velocity is zero. That means V will be 0 and then putting the values of the quantities given here, we can find H which comes out to be 20 meter. Finding out the correct value of H with the unit carries one mark. Now for finding out H, you must show this step. Then you will have to put the value of H m and g on the equation of potential energy which is mgh so when you will put the values you will get the answer 40 joule here one must remember that mass is in grams so this needs to be converted into kg so on writing the answer correctly 
40 joules along with the step here carries one mark. In a numerical, you should not write the answers directly. It is required that you show one intermediate step. That means the value substitution. The rest of the calculations, if in, even if you have not shown, that is not an issue. But you must show the value substitution in the given equation. And then the correct answer should be mentioned with the correct unit. So this carries one mark. Each of the steps carries one mark. So it is 1 plus 1, 2. So that was question number 1. Let's move on to question number 2. So this is question number 2. How does the resistivity of a metallic wire and semiconductor change with the rise in temperature? Resistivity of any substance depend upon the nature of the material and the temperature. So in a metal, the resistivity increases with the rise in temperature while in semiconductor it decreases with the rise in temperature. Again here no explanation was required and each of the parts carry one mark. So this is question number 2a and the marks distribution 1 plus 1. Now comes question number 2b. Question number 2b says that you have to draw a current voltage graph for a ohmic conductor that means a conductor which uh, follows ohm's law current voltage graph means on y axis you will plot current and on x axis you will plot for graph correct markings of the or correct labeling of the axis carries one mark and the graph should be a straight line for a ohmic conductor and it should begin from origin then only the initial requirements of ohmic conductors are satisfied so this graph carries one mark provided it begins from origin so this is how the mark distribution for question number 2b 1 plus 1 correct labeling of the axis and the correct uh, graph which should begin from origin. Now comes the third part of the question. A piece of wire is redrawn by pulling it until its length is doubled. Compare the new resistance with the original one. The question says that you are given a wire which is uh, made doubled by pulling it pulling its length that means the new length is twice the original length now when you pull the wire when you stretch the wire then the area becomes half of the initial value why half because you have made the length double that is why the area becomes half the new area or the thickness of the wire is reduced to uh, half of the previous value so if R dash is the new resistance and R is the original resistance, so since we have to compare the both the resistances, so that is why we will divide the two. And we will put their values here. Rho L dash upon A dash for R dash and Rho L upon A for R. And finally you will see that R, R dash upon R is 4 upon 1. Therefore, the ratio is R dash is to R is 4 is to 1. And that is uh, the answer. That means the new resistance will now become 4 times of the original resistance. So, here the marks distribution is that you show this step. This particular step is required to be shown in order to get one mark and another one mark for writing the answer that the new resistance is four times the original resistance 
or you can show in the ratio form so this carries one mark comes now question number 2d explain why the current that makes the heater element very hot only slightly warms the connecting wires leading to the heater the reason is the material of the heater element has higher resistance than the resistance of the connecting wire this one that is the reason part carries one mark and when some uh, element has high resistance then the heat produced is also more because heat energy and resistance are directly proportional to each other so reason and the answer carries uh, one mark each so that is how the mark distribution for question number 2d it is necessary to mention that heat is directly proportional to resistance if you remember the formula is h is equal to i square r t so here we will have to mention that heat and resistance are directly proportional for a given conductor the greater the resistance the more is the heat energy now comes question number 2e which is a numerical a geyser has a level 2 kilowatt and 220 volt what is the cost of using it for 30 minutes if the cost of electricity is rupees 3 per commercial unit in order to calculate Uh, these kinds of questions the money the cost for electricity bill we must ma uh, make sure that all the values are uh, that means the value of power electrical power is in kilowatt and time is in hour so in the first step we will find the electrical energy so power into time power of the geyser is 2 kilowatt and the time for running the geyser is 30 minutes so that needs to be converted into one uh, sorry into r so when we'll put the values we'll get 1 kilowatt hour electrical energy this step carries one mark again i am repeating children that in any numerical you must show the intermediate step next is to find cost the cost of electrical uh, electricity is rupees 3 per commercial unit which means 1 kilowatt hour will have how much rupees rupees 3 so this step will give you one more mark so that is how the marks distribution for this particular question question number 3a can the center of gravity of a body be outside it if yes give one example the answer is yes the center of gravity can be outside the given body for example any hollow object for example hollow sphere or hollow cone or hollow cylinder their center of gravity lies outside their body or you can write ring so any one of these answers is correct so 1 plus 1 comes now question number 3b question number 3b is a circuit diagram in which you were supposed to find out the equivalent resistance across the two terminals a b so this was a circuit and which clearly shows that 2 ohm and 4 ohm are in parallel with each other 
this is 2 ohm and this is 4 ohm and these are parallel with each other so in order to find out the resistance for both the uh, resistances r dash will be 4 upon 3 ohm this step that means the value substitution and the correct answer with the unit carries one mark now rest of the two resistance on either side of this combination are in series with the combination of uh, these two resistances so basically the circuit would be in this way this is 1 ohm this is 4 by 4 upon 3 ohm and this is 5 ohm a b so across the terminals a b all these three are in series with each other so then we will have to simply add up them and the equivalent resistance will come out to be 7.33 ohm so this step along with the uh, intermediate step will carry one mark so that is the uh, question number 3b Question 3C, how is MA related to VR? MA is mechanical advantage, VR is the velocity ratio of an actual machine, that means a practical machine. And state whether the efficiency of such a machine is less than 1, greater than 1 or equal to 1. So this question again consists of two parts. So MA is always less than VR of a practical or an actual machine. So this is carrying one mark. And the efficiency of such machines is always less than 1. So this is 1 mark. So it is 1 plus 1. Next is question number 3D. State the energy changes that occur in charging a battery and in unwinding of a watch spring. So when you charge a battery, you provide electrical energy to the battery which is converted into chemical energy while elastic potential energy is converted into kinetic energy during unwinding of a watch spring so this is the 3d part and now comes the last part 3e why is it difficult to open a door by pulling it or pushing it at the hinge? Explain. So it is definitely difficult. So you have to answer why is it difficult. Since the torque or moment is directly proportional to the perpendicular distance between the point of action of the force and the line of axis of rotation. So this statement, this relationship between the two is carrying one mark and this is most important uh, thing to be written. When these two are directly proportional to each other, so now when you are applying the force at the hinge, therefore this perpendicular distance is reduced and hence the torque will be reduced. So that is why you have to apply greater force to produce same torque so this carries one mark so that was question number 3e question number 4a what are alpha beta and gamma radiations composed of alpha consists of two protons and two neutrons while beta is a fast moving electron and gamma is an electromagnetic radiation. You will get two marks only when all three will be correct. Even if one is wrong, you will lose one mark and you will be given only one mark for writing two correct answers. That is the marks distribution for question number 4a. Now comes question number 4b.
explain why radium paint consisting of zinc sulfide and a trace of radium salt glow in dark so first of all radium is radioactive in nature which will give you one mark and these radioactive materials cause fluorescence which is the property of uh, these substances so this is carrying another one mark so the key word is radioactive and fluorescence if you don't mention fluorescence you will lose one mark if you don't mention radioactive you will lose one mark so that is answer 4b answer 4c state the principle of a machine now this is a principle uh, asked in this question so children one must not write the principle in their own words any law or any principle should not be written in their own words it should be written as it is which is uh, given in the book so the principle is if there is no dissipation of mechanical energy due to friction this is the condition uh, which needs to be mentioned in the answer if this condition is not there then the principle of machine will not be applicable so this is the most important line that you must mention so when after writing this statement you will write then the useful work done this is the another key word the useful work done by a machine against the resistive force which is the load this is the next key word should be exactly equal to the work done by the effort applied on the machine so these are the key words that needs to be mentioned while writing principle of machine if you miss any one of these you will lose two marks directly so that is question number 4 c for d name a machine which is used to lift heavy load by applying smaller effort and in which effort is applied at one point and its effect is transmitted to some other point so the answer would be for the first part uh, basically you are supposed to write the machines that are force multipliers so crowbar claw hammer block and tackle system of pulleys a uh, single movable pulley system or any of the uh, machine which is used as a force multiplier but if you write lever then you will be marked wrong because there are certain levers which are not used as force multiplier therefore it is necessary to mention the name of the machine general answers will not be accepted similarly a machine in which the effort is applied at one point and the effect is transmitted to some other point for this you can write a pulley single fixed pulley is the best example for such kind of machine so you must mention single fixed pulley or you write claw hammer or pedals of a bicycle and there are many more so again here you should mention the name of the machine and not just lever or any uh, general answer the questions the question asks you to write the name so you will have to mention the name now comes the last part is an ideal machine possible give one reason to support your answer definitely an ideal machine is not possible because there are losses that are caused due to friction heat is produced because of which and therefore uh, efficiency cannot be 100% 
so the key word here is losses due to friction need to be mentioned the word friction should come in your answer so that is question number 4 e today i will discuss only section 1 of the uh, question paper in the next turn i will discuss section 2